Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, as the screen already indicates, we will talk about the .NET library distributed lock. It's actually quite a cool library which helps you, as the name suggests, to build distributed locks. But be before we start into using it, let's talk about what is a lock, what are distributed locks for. So the purpose of a lock clearly is among several nodes to ensure that only one node is performing a certain job. There are use cases such as um, writing, writing certain resources, which obviously should only be written once in, in some scenarios. And then it could also be used for high availability. Uh, let's say we have a single node performing a job. Obviously, when it fails, it might mean that um, there is no recovery. Of course, there are solutions such as self-healing and, and orchestrators uh, uh, to do so in, in the cloud native and containerized world. Nevertheless, you might also have scenarios where it's better that the backup already has a state because starting up a certain job might require long loading times. And again, with a distributed lock, you can ensure that another node takes over once the lock is released, also in case of failure or shutdown of the certain leader, let's say. So this said, let's take a first look into the library and the code of the example. So here we go. As you can see, the code is prepared. You can also find it uh, in the comments on GitHub. What I use is the library we just discussed. I installed the file system and the Postgres um, log providers because we will take a look into two different solutions here. It's quite a simple .NET console application here. I create a GUID. Actually, this is important later um, when we visualize the example to um, have multiple processes, so multiple nodes running and performing a certain job. The actual execution of the job happens in this area. So within a while loop, we are first trying to acquire a lock. In case we get a handle, which means the handle is not null, we are actually starting to perform a job. And the job in our scenario is nothing else than writing the information that I, as a process, have the lock in that certain second, let's say. Why did I say second? Because with a thread sleep, to ensure that there are not too many messages, we are actually waiting one second, which makes it quite, quite a lot easier to, to actually see the console lock. Another process, which is not able to actually get the handle and therefore not having the lock, will write, I don't have the lock, because this process will not have the lock. To once again see it here, we have the ID, which is a generated GUID, so we can distinguish between the locks and we will also always see the current day time. This said, let's take a look on these two other messages here. They are quite simple. So one is actually using the file lock, which is the file system lock provider. And therefore, yeah, I generated a, a, a folder on my D drive in which I will store a certain file or in which uh, the system will store a certain file um, to use a file handler and actually uh, claim the lock on this file. The other option which we will take a look into is using Postgres as uh, yeah, the lock provider. So Postgres in a, in a clustered scenario in production can obviously be quite a good, uh, uh, yeah, quite a good provider for a strong consistent lock which can make your processes high available. In the Postgres scenario, we will later spawn a Postgres database uh, via, via Docker. We will run it via Docker and um, yeah, it's quite a simple connection string. So it's the default username, a simple password, my password. Obviously, we know that normally we shouldn't store passwords directly in the code. Nevertheless, to simplify the scenario, that's uh, yeah, quite easy. It will run on my local host, it will run on the standard port, and also the database uh, will be the default ones, which is Postgres. This said, let's quickly build the system. 
so the build succeeds. Now we can run the process. I already navigated into the right folder, so let's start the first node. As we can see, this GUID, every single second, is telling me that it has the log. So let's try it with a second one. As we saw, it, the second one is not getting the log, so it's saying I don't have the log. So let's assume this process fails. I will stop it. As we can see here, the other one is taking over because it gets the chance to acquire the lock and will continue to do so. If a self-healing or even a restart of the other process will happen, the other process will then only be a backup because, as it is written here again, it, will, it doesn't have the lock, so it can't acquire the lock. Let's once again look into the scenario. I stop the leading process and directly we can see the other process is taking over. Let's quickly also take a look on the folder that I provided. As we can see, there is a file created, actually a log file, .log, with the name I suggested and a certain hash to ensure that there is no um, yeah, overlap. This was already quite a simple scenario with a file system. Nevertheless, in some distributed scenarios, it might be difficult to use um, the file system because um, it depends obviously heavily on the, on the shared drive, on the network drive, if that will be strongly consistent. So therefore, let's change our application and build it again to use the Postgres log. As said, in production, a Postgres database could be a cluster which is strongly consistent. I will rebuild the solution. Yeah, and now of course it tells me that get file locked is not used, but we don't need it. So what we need to do now is spawn a new Docker database or Postgres database in Docker. So let's clear this window here. Let's also clear these ones. I will quickly copy the command. So what I will do is running the Postgres latest Docker version. I will give my container the name Postgres Mutex DB. Mutex, kind of another word for, for a log. Um, yeah, we'll just map the default po port for Postgres. And um, as I said, I will also set the, my, yeah, the password as my dash password. So um, this is reflected in the uh, hard-coded connection string. So let's start it. So the Docker container is running. I loaded the image already before, so therefore it was quite fast. And again, Let's run the first process. As we can see, obviously the first process is getting the lock. Let's run the second. And once again, the second of course can't acquire the same lock, so therefore it's telling me I don't have the lock. And again, we stop the leading process and immediately we see the second one taking over. So the conclusion is, using this library in .NET is quite simple, quite straightforward and with Postgres for example, and there are also many other um, like Oracle, SQL database, many other options to use, um, you have a simple way to actually build a distributed log which you can yeah, also quite good use in production. Looking forward to see your comments and also yeah ideas for maybe next video on .NET stuff. Thanks a lot. Cheers.